Brando, Tim. Pat, thanks, and welcome to the land of enchantment where high drama has been the rule rather than the exception. It's fourth seed at Syracuse and 12th seed at Drexel. As you look at the bracketing, the first top seed to be sent home back to the Midwest, the Purdue Boilermakers, and now it's Syracuse trying to avoid the same. Along with Derek Dickey, Tim Brando, and that was an amazing thing what the Bulldogs were able to do to Purdue. They did a terrific job defensively, holding the Boilermakers to only 38% from the field, and they also just took over on the board. Now for Drexel, what must happen for them to wear the glass slipper yet another Day. Game's going to come down to who has position inside. Malik Rose needs to be healthy. Twisted his ankle in the game against Memphis, but he had a terrific offensive evening. He has to be able to stay in the game. John Wallet for Syracuse is an outstanding player. Likes to move away from the basket. He had 18 points, only three rebounds and four fouls in that game. He's got to stay on the floor. Let's take a look at our starting lineups. Jeff, he goes by Jay, but the given name Jeff Myers. Chuck Guitar along that front line with Malik. Mike Darakis and Cornelius Overby were hot shooting from the perimeter in their last matchup. And for Syracuse, the much-improved Todd Bergen joining John Wallace as the other bookend. Otis Hill in the middle with Jason Cipolla and Latara Sims. He, too, is nursing a knee injury coming into this game. And there's Bill Harrion, born in New England, now a NCAA tournament-winning coach for the first time in the history of the school. And Jimmy Beheim, winningest all-time coach in Syracuse history, looking to make the Sweet 16 yet again. The opening tip controlled to Drexel. Today's tip, Drexel, the second longest win streak in the NCAA to Texas Tech, who had a narrow escape last night. Syracuse, 6-12 in second round games. Guitar. The sill brings it down. And an early watchful eye will keep on both Lazar Sims for Syracuse and Malik Rose. That ankle, that right ankle for him for Drexel. Lazar Sims with a bang knee that he hurt in the Big East tournament against Connecticut. Turns the ball over. Is it a result of that injury? One we'll find out. Yeah, you'd have to think that uh, he won't be as maneuverable as the norm with that knee problem. A bumping, grinding. Mm. John Clockerty, our lead official, Art McDonald, Tom Harrington, the rest of our veteran crew. Overby at the point for the Dragons. Right past, and you can see him favoring that knee, Lazara Sims, unable to stay with the slashing Overby. He couldn't plant and go left and right, and that's a, a, it's going to be a major factor in this game. One of the reasons Malik Rose was successful in the game against Memphis was his guards were able to shoot the ball well from the perimeter. Sims is really hobbling. More than and we've seen him hobble throughout the course of this tournament to date. I asked him before the game, how are you feeling? He said 100%. I'll give him 70% at best. Myers leaves it for Guitar. Two good looks by Guitar, both rimming out. Chuck's getting great look at the basket. The Dragons shot 50%, 9 out of 18 from three-point range, which in essence opened up the middle to allow Rose to be able to operate. Shot clock winding down to 10 for Lazarus Sims, and there's the dump down to Hill. Double teamed. Locked down by Malik Rose. Pretty good elevation on that rebound. Myers. A three-pointer, and the confidence exudes from the Dragons' backcourt. Nice shot by Jeff Myers to pull up on that play, but after Malik Rose got the rebound, he did not cross half court. So that ankle is definitely bothering him. Hill gets that entry pass and then turns it over. How about on the defensive end? Lazarus Sims has a problem with the knee, the right knee. Look at as he plants and tries to get back and recover. Cornelius Overby takes him off the dribble right to the basket. A very early sign that could indicate trouble for Jimmy Beheim's team. Drexel returns the favor. And when you speak of Drexel, who are they? Where do they come from? Even Bill Harrion wasn't sure when he took the job five years ago. The North Atlantic Conference. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, out of the shadow of the Big Five. 
three straight North Atlantic Conference championships. And a team that has made plenty of noise in the NCAAs in 1996. You can add that to the profile. Wallace fading away. Rose. He's favoring that ankle, but he's still able to get elevation. That's an offensive foul. Overby many times guilty of that as Cipolla was in position to get the player control foul. Overby overhandled the ball on that possession, trying to get inside and unable to get enough clearance between himself and make that pass before he charged. Syracuse wants to get their half-court game rolling and allow Sims to see over that defense. He does there, finding Hill into the paint. That is a tremendous advantage for Lazara Sims, working against the smaller Overby on the defensive end. If he's able to exude his quickness and be able to get inside and make that pass down inside the Wallace and Hill, he certainly is going to be a factor for Syracuse. Rose draws the blocking foul from Todd Bergen. Well, we talk about the injury factor. Malik Rose down inside, going to try to give some support. This is on the offensive end as he catches a ball on the defensive end against Otis Hill. He had a little bit of a problem there, but offensively, getting your feet set is very important to have your balance to be able to push off. Bill Harrion, who tutored under Mike Jarvis, he witnessed uh, the GW coach lose a 17-point lead. Well, that is so rare mm. for GW. And Jimmy Beheim, of course, 14 consecutive 20-plus win seasons in Syracuse. Dragons lead it by two. Three and a half minutes gone here at the pit in Albuquerque. We've already seen how well Syracuse can rebound the ball, especially on the, their defensive end, which means that Drexel has to shoot the ball well. They have to shoot a high percentage, and that's what Bill Harrion talked about yesterday and the day before. His team needs to shoot the ball well. Lazar Sims gets his first basket. It's a three-pointer. And the Orangemen lead by one. Lazarus could be the most improved player in the Big East Conference. They don't give out that award, but he did a great job all season long of continuing to improve. Cipolla was out of bounds upon saving that. Drexel will keep it. You know, it's interesting. Mike Trangisi at the Big East Tournament, the conference commissioner, made the statement, always the visionary. You know, we need a most improved player award <laughs> because Lazarus Sims is deserving of something. Drexel underneath. 15-58 remaining in Albuquerque. Syracuse by one. Thanks to Sprint Business, there's a company who does more business in skis. Sprint gave us an edge. Sprint worked with Volant and brought them real solutions to help them get ahead so they can check orders online from anywhere and promote new products through video conferencing. Now, they do business a whole new way. And sales are really soaring. Help your business do more business. Call Sprint Business. Here comes one. Oh, an 87 Buick station wagon. Got it. 74 Volkswagen Beetle. Horsepower V8 six speed 1996 Chevy Camaro Z28. Yeah, but what color? Maybe it was fate or our sweet children. No way, Jose! Or that truck that almost hit me came this close. But for some reason, I pulled off and there was a KFC. And they have this whole new menu. Time for you. I was surprised. New Colonel's I Crispy Strips and chunky chicken pot pie made fresh all day. You got all this at KFC? If you haven't been to KFC lately, you don't know what you're missing. I may never have to cook again. Now get a Colonel's Crispy Strips or Chunky Chicken Pot Pie combo meal, just $3.99. Hey, why watch the Final Four alone when Sears can put you with a friend? Make that three friends and Final Four legends Cheryl Swoops and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Shoot, shoot! I could have made that shot! 
but not on your couch. At the game! Come to Sears by March 30th and register to win four seats for next year's men's or women's final four. Beside Kareem and Cheryl. Sure beats sitting behind him. Join 60 Minutes Ed Bradley at ringside Sunday to watch Muhammad Ali, still the greatest, in the fight of his life against the toughest opponent he ever fought, Parkinson's Syndrome. 7-6, to six, Syracuse by one. Listen to the tenacious Bill Harriet of Drexel. We're not a household name, and, and I think when people, you know, want to know who Drexel is, we're, we don't play in a big conference, we're not on TV that often, we have had some success the last few years. Uh, when I interviewed for the job, it was almost like I didn't even know where Drexel was, but uh, I'm, I'm happy I took the job, I'm happy to be here, and I'm really fortunate to, to coach a great group of kids. Three-time NAC Coach of the Year in his five seasons, and uh, he's a piece of work. Oh, indeed he is, and this team was 26-3, and three, now 27-3 and three all season long. And their three losses were by a total of ten points. Wallace can't hit. Hill the foul. The strength and the brawn of the Syracuse team and its front line is something that Bill Harrion will have to solve through the course of this afternoon. That's why Malik Rose and Chuck Guitar have to be effective rebounding the ball defensively. Otherwise, the Irishmen are going to completely dominate both boards. The ball denial from Hill. Not a good decision. You know, Hill is cousins with Danye Abram mm. of Boston College, and one can make a case that Malik Rose's game very similar to that of Danye. Yes, it is, but uh, Danye can step out a little bit away from the basket, unlike Malik Rose, but uh, Danye's a low man there, man. He's a heck of a score for the Boston College Eagles. Darakis. Three-pointers have been raining for the Dragons here in Albuquerque. Both Darakis and Overby off of the bench yesterday or on Thursday, David Fry. He hit a couple of big ones as well to give the Dragons the opportunity at that win against Memphis. Mike Darakis was three out of five from long range. Overby gets the rebound. He has numbers with Jay Myers. Takes it You're not going to come and get me. I will take it in. Overby in overdrive. <laughs> At six feet tall, he jumped right over Lazar Sims. At six foot four. Dragons by two. Wallace, there's the contact. He likes that contact. It enables him the room for just like that, the finger roll. So strong and experienced. He knew how to use his body as a shield to be able to get that advantage and lean in on Chuck Guitar. There's the duck down to Rose. Hill by himself. Doesn't go down for Malik. It's obvious that Arian is trying to get Malik involved early in this offense. Wallace leaves it for Bergen. The putback. Syracuse living with second chance opportunities here in the early going. That's how they have the lead in this game, by getting those second shots. If Drexel can keep the Orangemen off the boards, off their offensive boards, they can control this game, but they need to make outside shots. Good cut by Overby. Sapola with the reach-in foul. Cornelius Overby is playing the, tur the passing lane very, very well. He comes up with the steal, gets away from Sims, but he goes right over the top of Todd Bergen to be able to lay that ball in. And at six feet tall, that's an excellent explosion, but they have to continue. The Dragons have to continue playing good defense and make plays in transition. Cornelius had 10 points and five rebounds in that first round win over fifth seed in Memphis. And just from that replay, one could notice that Sims had difficulty in keeping up with Overby, and it might be through the course of this game that Malik Rose becomes a decoy, and the backcourt tries to take advantage of Lazar Sims and his difficulty. Well, Rose is such a good passer, and that's another thing that he did very well. When he was double-teamed against Memphis, he waited for the defense to come, and he pitched it back out, but his teammates shooting the ball well from the perimeter is what gave them the victory. Earlier today, the top seed, the Purdue Boilermakers, three-time Big Ten champions, knocked out by eight-seeded Georgia. Now it's Drexel's turn and an opportunity of pulling off another upset of major proportion. 
Otis Hill flashing in the middle with J.B. Reesteiner on the floor. They play in tandem rarely. But, uh, Jimmy Beheim going big and strong down low. Sims, guitar, the rebound. Much better job boxing out. Nice crossover by Myers, Travel. but he traveled. He lost the ball kind of uh, deflected off of his knee after the crossover move, and that led to the turnover, their fifth turnover of the game. Jeff Meyer is very, very quick and nice crossover, but as he crosses over, he loses the handle on the ball. It was good defense out there by Todd Bergen to be able to slightly tip that ball enough to force the turnover. <laughs> Bergen. Out of bounds. Prior to today's game, the Drexel Band out of Philadelphia played Rocky. They played that theme when the Dragons came out onto the court. So they understand the theme of this game. Malik Rose has position on J.B. Reed Snyder. Band is into it. Uh, it sounds like they are. They just need their team to be into it. And Malik Rose is doing a good job defensively on the boards. He just has to have support. He, they're going to need three or sometimes four guys to come back and rebound defensively against the Orangemen. You see the cues with uh, double the output of shots at the basket. All of those second chance opportunities that have led to most of their hoops. They lead it by one. Marius Yanoulis is on the floor for Syracuse along with John Wallace. Otis Hill taking a breather, as is Cipolla. Malik Rose, that's a, a long distance one that grazes the iron. He had no lift in his legs, and, and with, with having a bad wheel, a bad ankle like that, you have to rely more on, on a set shot unless you're powering the ball up inside. Reef Snyder. Lazara Sims, another second chance, another deuce. Reef Snyder using the glass. Terrific job by Lazara Sims on the offensive boards and the recognition to be able to pass the ball off as his teammate, J.B. Reef Snyder, was right there for the lay-in. Nine minutes deep, and the Orangemen with a three-point lead. Syracuse much more physical underneath than Memphis. Memphis tall and quick. Drexel was able to get inside more often against them. Guitar hits a runner. 15-14. That's an area where Chuck Guitar can exploit because John Wallace, if you saw in that exchange, he just waved at him. So if you give a pump fake, you can drive by Wallace out on the court. <laughs> Wallace for three. Reef Snyder going after it. Myers on the deck. Finally saved to Sims. Good hustle by the six foot eleven inch senior. JB out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Shot clock reset and another putback. This one doesn't go for John Wallace. He took one of the chops. Still smarting over it. Caracas tipped out to Myers. Great look to Rose, and then the push from Bergen. Second foul against Todd Bergen. 9.56 remaining, and that altitude may be getting to Bergen and company. Put back after put back, giving the cues an edge. <laughs> advisory there is a winter storm watch in effect for the entire area today seems like it's only going to get worse look if you don't have to be out there please get off the roads Now, we acted because our gross attainable margin revenues, coupled with gross revenue detractors... I'd like to ask... I'd just like to say these were profoundly misaligned with our latest rapidized capitalization schedule. Mm, thank so you. They... Mr. Praven, you're an employee of United Airlines. Employee owner. Exactly. What led you people to this electronic ticketing this year? We figured people would like it. Hmm. Come fly our friendly skies. Help. Are you doing the right thing? Help. 
Can you afford it? Help. What kind of strings are attached? Help. Suppose it doesn't work out. Help! You need some good advice before you commit to a cellular phone. <laughs> Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. There's no place on earth that I'd rather be than out in the open where it's all plain to see if it's gonna get done it's up to you and to me and there's no place that I'd rather be Come on, along I'm headed for the mountains I'm push here Head for the mountains It's cold and it's smooth and it's waiting for you Come on, head for the mountains I'm push Here's the latest update. Lots of backdoor action as Nash Bridges slams one in. He's really fired up. Don Johnson is Nash Bridges, March 29th on CBS. 15 to 14, Syracuse leads Drexel right now. There's another game going on down in Indianapolis. Pat O'Brien in New York, along with Clark Kellogg. This one, Mississippi State and Princeton. Princeton in the black uniforms, and uh, it is 18 to 11, Clark. That's not a large enough lead for Mississippi State. To get Princeton out of their comfort zone, you have to push it to double digits. Dante Jones, the main offensive weapon so far for Mississippi State. State has a huge height advantage, and you're right, they've got to show some discipline on offense, so they'll be vulnerable to that defense from Princeton. Exactly, and then Princeton wants to slow you down. Look at the spacing here, the cuts, the shuffle cuts, the ball movement. It really wears on you. You've got to be not only patient offensively, but you've got to be patient at the defensive end as well. 7.08 left before the halftime. 11 to 18 to 11 is the score. Let's go back to Albuquerque and Tim Brando and Derek Dickey. It has been a half-court game featuring six second-chance points for Syracuse. And Drexel certainly not with the healthy Malik Rose. Still favoring that ankle. And now the Dragons trail by three to the Orangemen. John Wallace getting his second basket of the game on the inside. Over to Otis Hill with yet another rebound. He has five already in this game. And with Rose not completely healthy, Overby and Duracus, Jay Myers have to make those easy opportunities. All the Dragons have to make their opportunities. They have to shoot a high percentage so they can stay close to the Orangemen and get defensive rebounds. Otis Hill getting it done. And it's very obvious that Rose is laboring as he comes back down to the other end of the floor. And defensively, he becomes a liability. Yes, he does. And when you have a bad ankle, a bad knee, what, what the problem presents is your ability to be able to jump a second and third time. And Malik Rose doesn't have that. Otis Hill is pretty much jumping in traffic all by himself. Myers, that one last touched by Yanulis. 13 on the shot clock for Drexel as they trigger it in. This is the difference. Number four, Otis Hill, healthy legs versus a bad leg. Jumps right over the back of Malik Rose without any contact, able to put the ball back in the basket. Bill has eight points, is four of four from the floor, already with six rebounds on the day. Shot clock at two. Overby. It touched the rim. The ball did touch the rim. Yes. Artie McDonald coming over to make John Clockerty aware of that. Possession arrow. So it becomes a alternating possession. And Syracuse gets it. Bill Harrigan needs any break he can get. Right now, trailing by five. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. Even better, broken in. Critics are knocked out by Rumble in the Bronx. The New York Times calls it fun and death-defying. Cheerfully daffy. Time Magazine says Chan has the muscle and the charm. 
and two thumbs up say Siskel and Ebert. It's a lot of fun. Jackie Chan, Rumble in the Bronx, rated R, now playing. These days it seems we have more and more on our minds, which means we have more and more to forget about. Hey, we could all use a car like Chevy Cavalier. If you're low on oil, it reminds you. If you leave your dome light on, it remembers to turn it off. Heck, even if you forget to lock your doors, you're still protected by its theft deterrent system. We've all got enough on our minds. We need a car we can trust and forget about. That's genuine Chevrolet. That should do it. I'm transferring $100,000 right now. The electronic world can be a treacherous place. Yeah, well, look where we are. This doesn't look right. It looks great. I'm not happy here. And if you've got some kind of off-the-shelf network that's not custom designed for your business, then something unexpected can happen. It's not there yet? Only one field goal in the last 6.09 for Drexel, and uh, the inability of Malik Rose to be a factor due in large part to that. Well, Malik was the North Atlantic Conference Player of the Year. He averaged 20 points, 13 rebounds a game. Teammates call him the horse. He's been able to carry the team all year, but with one bad wheel, it's going to be very difficult for him this evening. He's had more difficulty on the defensive end in blocking out than on the offensive end with the ball. Sapolo the floater. See, the loose ball finally knocked out by Syracuse against Memphis. He brings that down with authority, and there's no second chance for Syracuse. No, and, and he doesn't have the ability to lift. And every time there's a timeout, he has to go out of the game. He comes back in. The ankle will stiffen up on him a little bit, and he has to get it loosened up all over again. So it takes a couple of possessions up and down the floor. Wallace working in against him. This time he does manage a rebound with the outlet to Duracus. Myers on the wing. Myers a pull-up. Count the basket. Hill going for the goaltender. This is it. This is an excellent push by Drexel. They don't get many opportunities in transition. Mike DeRocas runs the ball up the court, but I like what Jeff Myers did. He pulls back a little bit to put the ball on the glass. Coming in to pick up the goaltend is Otis Hill. On the other end, Hill giving it up to Yanulis. He's joined by Sapolo, John Wallace, and Lazar Sims. That's a moving pick. Lazar Sims whistled by John Clockerty. He better watch his mouth. First foul on Lazar Sims. Yanulis out of the game. Todd Bergen checks back in. Wallace has had a slow start. He's just two out of seven from the floor. So to a certain extent, Drexel getting a break. With Malik Rose not playing well. And that'll be an offensive foul against Drexel. Maracas trying to get a push off the ball against Otis Hill. Duracus is first. Duracus is just trying to set a screen down low so that Malik Rose doesn't have to operate on his own to get free. And in doing so, he moved his body and picks up that foul. Turning it over. Hill, up and over. Good time. Rebound to Rose. He does have five rebounds. Duracus on the wing. Oh, let it go, let it go. Myers sends it to Overby. Good hustle. Overby. A foul inside against Sims, and he's still barking. You mentioned it earlier, he had better be careful, and he's barking again. Malik Rose cannot get back in the action. He's kind of lingering out there at the top of the key. He is so excited. His teammate Jeff Meyer saves the ball, gets it back into play, and Cornelius Overby feeling like he's got a crease, still trying to attack the basket. Overby is capable of creating for himself and for others, but many times 
he tries a bit too hard and it gets under the skin of his head coach. <laughs> but he has certainly overcome a great deal, has Overby, in this NCAA tournament. He has seven points, and they're all very needed with Malik Rose playing on a leg and a half. alley to Bergen. Taken down by Guitar. Overby, stutter step, finds Myers in traffic to foul. Otis Hill, his first. Bill Harrion has told the Dragons, guys, we can score in transition against Syracuse. They do not get back well defensively. Half court set, we're having problems getting open, so why not attack? Attack them while they're back on their heels. Take the ball inside, draw the defense, and pitch it off, but get the ball up near the glass. off a time or two at 5,000 feet. That's Phil Harrion. Tied at 19. The Archman really allowing Drexel an opportunity to grow in confidence with Rose laboring. Drexel has not played very well and, and they are right in this game. All they have to do is do a better job of controlling their defensive boards, not let the Orangemen get second and third looks, and they have a chance to get control. Hill into the paint. Syracuse just needs to continue doing that. He has 10, does Hill, of the 21 points for the Orangemen. Dragons do not have an answer for Otis Hill inside. John Wallace is more on the perimeter, but Otis, with his big body, can dominate inside. Luke Rose was not ready for that pass from Myers, and then the reach-in foul against Jeff. The Dragons are trying to get the ball inside to Rose. That was not a good angle. You have to be able to find a, an angle from the left corner, the right corner, or even set a screen as we tried. We saw Mike Dorakis try to set the last time down the floor. He wasn't able to get stationary, but you want to get it into Rose, but you have to find the proper way to get it there. So far, Drexel's best offense has been the quick push and the transition basket. In doing that, they expose Sims's injury. Lazarus, no lift with no lift whatsoever. They tried to leave it for Otis Hill. He wasn't ready for it. Overby. The Rockets in the corner. And you see just into the game, David Fry. He too can line up from around the yard. Joined by Ross Niesler, number 21 in the gold uniform for Drexel. The other night against Memphis, we saw Malik Rose yelling for the ball. He doesn't have the stamina or the second win. Another foul off the ball. John Wallace. Otis Hill picks that one up. It's Hill with his second, and that's important, so they prefer Wallace to picked up that foul. It's very important. Malik Rose trying to get inside, and there you see Mike Durakis once again trying to pick up, you know, pick up his teammate and give him a space to be able to get in there. Otis Hill. Picks up another foul, his second of the game. Drexel is five of eight at the stride. It's keeping them in this game. Syracuse has yet to get to the free throw line. It could be a major factor in this game. The Orange men are not being aggressive, going to the glass and trying to draw body contact using finesse. They're now six of ten. And trail by one. <laughs> Syracuse is not as deep as Drexel. Hard to believe, but true. Mm. And through the course of this game, it can become a factor. Mike Mike at this altitude. It sure can. Mike DeRocas has done a terrific job defensively against Jason Sapolo. And the foul. Inside against David Fry. He got three quick ones the other day against Lorenzen Wright. That's the way Bill Harrion teaches his team to play defense. A little bump, a little grind is okay with him. A forearm shiver that time from the coach. They trail by one. Way out there, there's hops.
without hops, beer wouldn't taste as good as it does. Take the best part of the hops, the beer's going to taste even better. We found a way now makes it possible to brew beer straight from the heart of the hops. For a beer with heart that goes down easy. We think so much of this new beer, we're just calling it who we are. Miller. Always new possibilities. You gotta reach for what's out there. I could have sent the money, Western Union. Did you really need the money? Did you just tell me? If you had told me you needed the money really fast, I would have said it was... If you didn't send the money, Western Union... Tell me these things anyway, what's Did you really send the money? Just tell them to wait. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. No, I didn't send the money, Western Union, but I figured, what's the difference? 601... If you didn't send the money, Western Union, did you really send the money? Sorry it didn't get there, but I wouldn't worry. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. With the Vortec engine in a Chevy S-Series, you can go around the world four times before you have to stop for a tune-up. Have a nice trip. Chevy trucks like a rock. Peter. Right this second, someone needs a ride. With a Motorola pager, you know. Now. Thanks for picking us up, Mom. Don't hug me. You're wet. Mommy. Okay, you got the pager number, right? Right this second, it's just the two of you. We're, We're going, going out. out. But if the baby needs you, you know. Now. Well, no page, no problem. Let's have dessert. Years of practice, dedication, sacrifice. We should do it for days. Lead an athlete to one place. Right here. The Late Show. Only the best play on Dave's court. A capacity crowd here at the pit in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Side of high drama in West Region's second round action. 12th seated Drexel against 4th seated Syracuse. Along with Derek Dickey, Tim Brando, already today, Purdue, the top seed, the first to be sent home in this NCAA tournament with a number one seed by its name. Georgia knocking them off. Georgia doing a terrific job of controlling the game on the defensive end. Our bracketing in Albuquerque after the foul inside against Drexel. David Fry picking up that personal. Get the ball to Otis Hill. That should be the philosophy of the Orangemen. Take the ball inside every time. Let him score until he can't score anymore. Or at least allow the defense, force the defense to collapse and let him pitch it back out. Cipolla missing that one. And another rebound from Malik Rose, who's been reduced to a designated rebounder. He has six of them. Not much in the scoring column. But smart enough to pick it back out. Look at that pass to Myers. Rejected by Wallace. Bergen saves it. Beautiful play. And the lack of quickness from Malik Rose, again, illustrated. He made a great pass inside to give the ball up. Under three minutes remaining. Drexel hanging close. John Wallace into the paint. That's just his third field goal of this game. Otis Hill has been the dominant factor for Syracuse early. Drexel reduced to a perimeter game with an ailing Malik Rose. A bad right ankle after that win against Memphis. Meisler and Airball. Out of bounds for the Orangemen. Most of Drexel's productivity has come out of the transition game. Their set offense is unable to work with Malik Rose, only a decoy. Drexel has not made a field goal the last four and a half minutes because of setting up in the half court. Syracuse has been able to get the ball inside. If they can utilize the, their advantage with John Wallace and Otis Hill, they can take over this game right now. Lee Snyder is coming to the game for Hill. The 32 in white. Todd Bergen working against Myers. Wallace tries to get Rose away from the basket. Reese Snyder, guitar the rebound.
Rockus has been unable to come out of the gates with many three-pointers. That's been a problem. He and Guitar are threats. When going inside, every shot becomes more difficult against the taller orange man. That was a good no call, a lot of contact. Put it up and go get it. That's been Syracuse's offense now. Here's the transition game, and Overby knows how to run it. Out to Garakis for the trade. Rebound cleared to Bergen. He needed that basket. Sims, good show, can't finish. And again, another opportunity at numbers. Myers leaves it for Overby. A little quick. Myers fights for the rebound. And draws a foul. Great hustle by the Dragons to continue to try to get this game up and down. Drexel needs a full court game in order to be able to score against Syracuse. They're looking for the outside shot. It's not there, but you still have to be able to hustle and get inside and get that rebound. Jeff Myers does a good job of getting inside position. Not a good idea by Lazarus Sims to pick up a third with only a minute 13 remaining in the half. He's playing on a leg and a half as we documented. He's got the knee problem stemming from that Big East tournament injury. And he is not up to speed. And that's really one of the reasons why Drexel's quickness in the open floor has been so evident. And they need, they need that style of game. We mentioned that. And they have to find a way to control their defensive boards, not let the Orangemen get those tips one, two, three times at the basket. If they get the defensive rebound, they will run. They'll get it out, look for the three-point shot. Raheem Riley coming into the game, the sophomore out of Northeast High School in Philadelphia, PA. Needs a little time to work on that upper body, but 6'7", 175, it gives them more quickness to run this press. Uh, yeah, it certainly does, but he doesn't need to be inside with a lot of contact. You can hear the crowd here in Albuquerque firmly behind the underdog, which has been very successful in this tournament to date. Our tournament summary, two of those five upsets coming right here. we've gone to the 64 team format number eight seed has never beaten the number one seed is that correct and the number 12 seed and an eight have never emerged mm. from the same region and there's been a 12 seed since 1980 when 48 teams were in the ncaa tournament field syracuse playing a road game tonight <laughs> these fans be really behind Drexel that has become a very compelling story. This Dragons team out of the North Atlantic Conference, never having won an NCAA tournament game in three consecutive tries, they finally cracked through against Memphis on Thursday. How about the Lobos of New Mexico? They won to keep their uh, season alive. You can make a case that that's one of the reasons that the basketball fans of this city are out here in support of Drexel. They're reaching foul. Listen to that. They love their dragons here in Albuquerque. One of the few times Malik Rose was able to work real hard and receive the ball inside. You see he's got J.B. Reeves Snyder, but he gives a right hand. He gives a left hand. He walks the ball down on the block. He doesn't have that explosiveness, but at least he does have the hands good enough to be able to catch it. Otis Hill picks up his third foul. Tim, you know from playing sports that a sprained ankle can always be a problem. But at halftime, he's going to sit down for 15 minutes and then try to come back out and respond. It's going to be very difficult. We're going to keep our eye on him the first couple of minutes up and down the court the second half. And the same really holds true for any player. I mean, you've got the trump card factor inside and out. Drexel hampered inside. Mm. Syracuse hampered outside. With Lazar Sims with that bad knee. You're absolutely right. They're on their feet in Albuquerque. Wanting a stop from the upstart from the net. to Overby, 
and let him go into overdrive as we come to the intermission. Overby tries to take the ball to the basket. John Wallace defending, going in at halftime time. Overby's trying to get inside. He takes a step and a nice dribble, but John Wallace comes from the weak side. Says, don't bring it in here, guys. We're going in the locker room and regroup. But they're going inside at 24. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA tournament will continue after this word from your local station. There was a time when we didn't have a worry in the world. Today, well, we seem to be making up for it. That's why you need Chevy Lumina. A car you can trust. A car so well-engineered and affordable, you could have it paid off long before it needs its first tune-up. Chevy Lumina. Because someday you'll realize nobody's got enough money, and everybody's got enough worries. He cheated on her, and yet she stayed. But when he needed her most, she'd fallen for another man. You're moving in the guy you're having an affair with? A husband, a wife, and a lover, Sunday. This is CBS. The new Plymouth Voyager was named Automobile Magazine's All-Star Minivan for 1996. Car and Driver ranked it in their 10 best automobiles of 1996. And not only does it surpass other minivans on the road, but with a 3-liter, 150-horsepower V6 engine, it has 36 times the cargo space of a Porsche 911 for about a third of the price. of winter so why go out now because the toyota spring rush is on if you rush into your dealer you can see toyota's classy flagship avalon and while everyone else is in hibernation get a great value on a new camry i'm talking best car built in america you can drive a camry dx home for just 229 a month but hurry they'll be gone before the snow melts brand new toyota's special camry values to boot wow what a rush CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Welcome back to our studios in New York. I'm Pat O'Brien along with Clark Kellogg, and it's not at the 24, Syracuse and Drexel, 24 apiece. you got to wonder what Jim Beheim is thinking. Here he thought he probably talk, got a break with Memphis <laughs> losing, and now it's like a home game for Drexel there. Yeah, the crowd has gotten into it, and Drexel has hung around because Syracuse has had a tough time. They've gotten more shots. They just haven't made enough of them, and Drexel has been able to get to the free throw line and make some free throws. We're going to get you all out to some live basketball. Show. There's another game there at halftime as well. Mississippi State leading Princeton 31-20 to now. Now, and the fans out there holding signs up saying, win one more for Pete. They're trying. Daryl Wilson ignites the bulldog offense. He spots up from behind the arc and drains a three there. Then Mississippi State shows their version of the half-court game. Here you take a look. Dante Jones on the nice feed with the punch over the top. All right, they're just about ready to uh, get playing again in the second half there. And we come back, we'll get you out to some live basketball as we continue our coverage of the basketball tournament here on CBS. And we're glad you are with us. thousand miles in my car and I use it to commute down into the city. I love my car. My car is my baby and I trust Pennzoil. With its revolutionary Pennstar molecule, Pennzoil clings to moving parts. Works like liquid ball bearings. I'm a doctoral grad student in psychology. I change my oil about every 3,000 miles. But of course the oil really has to want to change. Hey Showtime baby! Spend four bucks on a case of Pennzoil or 33 cents on every quart! 
I thought that being away at college meant you could really cut loose. <laughs> Last night I did. I don't remember much. But I know that if I'd been sober, I never would have gotten in the car with that guy. I hardly know him. The good news is we didn't crash or anything. The bad news is now I've got to find out what else I did last night. NCAA Youth Education through Sports Clinics say yes to children ages 10 to 18 with fun and challenging sports skills, conditioning, and life skills sessions conducted by top college coaches and student athletes. Yes Clinics, which are free of charge to the local communities at selected NCAA championships, provide participants with opportunities to learn the mental and competitive skills involved in sports and in life. Yay! This message provided by the NCAA. The NCAA Foundation supports programs that respond to the needs of student-athletes. Programs include degree completion scholarships, choices alcohol education grants, life skills, winning for life, and sports journalism scholarships. The NCAA Foundation, enhancing the present and future of student-athletes. This message provided by the NCAA. More on Nash Bridges' action. Inbound to the corner. Back to Nash. Drives the lane. The jump. It's in there. Don Johnson is Nash Bridges, March 29th on CBS. All right, uh, live basketball action going on in Indianapolis right now in the southeast region. Let's take you all out to the RCA Dome where Mississippi State leads Princeton by 11. Here's Quinn Buckner and Gus Johnson. Second half just beginning. Mississippi State on top of Princeton 31 to 30. Bulldogs shot 66% from the floor in the first half. Princeton only 31%. Ball knocked away, recovered He's got by shoot. Goodrich. He'll fire. Got the front of the iron. And Darrell Wilson with the long rebound. Princeton back in the zone. Lobbed inside. Dampier turn and shoot. Eric Dampier. Really solid game for the big fella today. He's got 10. You know, if you've got a height advantage, take it. There, there's no way Goodrich can either stop him from getting the ball or getting it in the basket because Dampier can just raise over the top. You gotta, if you're going to do anything with Dampier, you're moving further out off the block. But when he's shooting it like that, there's just not a lot you can do. Eric Dampier, 5 of 6 from the field, 10 points and 4 rebounds. Four rebounds. He established himself inside on the defensive end by getting two block shots, and you haven't seen Princeton go inside very often since then. Miss Goodrich kicking it out, and Sidney Johnson, but a whistle, three-second violation called against the Tigers. And in the first half, you can just see MSU establishing themselves in the painted area. You can see that by the 12 three-point shots that Princeton have taken, they've only made three, but they have to take those because Dampier is inside. There's really nowhere else to go because Mississippi State, in addition to getting points in the paint, defensively has flattened out and pushed everybody in the paint to force jump shots. Jones in the corner, rising up. Nice rebound by Chris Doyle, one hand. Nice rebound, he got away with a little push off with the other hand. That's why he only got that one with one. Mississippi State with their biggest lead of the game, 13 points. Here's Henderson crossing over. Goodrich. That's what they've got to do, they've got to make it. When they get penetration and force Zampier down to the basket, Goodrich is the first one that has to make shots. Steve Goodrich with 10 points. 33-23, Dampier on the low post, cut off. But I like what he did, he didn't force it, he just passed the ball back out because you can always go back to him. 15 on the shot clock. Whistle inside and Dampier draws the foul. That's number three on Eric Dampier. 
But I'll tell you what, if he goes another 20 seconds like he did just there, he was calling for the ball, got it, he was double teamed, and he passed it back out. Big people like to get it back if they, they do the right thing there. He didn't get it back, and that's why he got that foul call, because he started moving his arms, flailing it. Here's Goodrich, pump fake. And a nice one back over the top of his head. 12 points for Goodrich. 33-25. Got to get it to the big fella. Don't, don't, don't waste time doing all that other stuff. Just throw it down there and make them stop it. So far, Princeton unable to handle Eric Dempier. Hard to get enough pressure on uh, Mississippi State's guards to force them away from Eric Dampier. They're, they're not great ball handlers, but they're good enough that they can get away from the defensive pressure and eventually get it to Dampier. This Doyle. Llewellis, the freshman with the big shot against UCLA, really quiet today. He'll take a shot there. Tough shot to take. They're in a 2-3 zone. They, they bring the wings out to cover the shooters to force Princeton to shoot over pressure. Russell Walters. Dampier making himself big inside, going off the glass. See, this, was, this is not the same Mississippi State team that played the other day against Virginia Commonwealth. They didn't pass the ball that many times. Richard Williams has gotten his message across to these young men. Dan Pierce, 7 of 8, 14 points. And when he's established himself so far in his collegiate career as a shot blocker and a rebounder, but showing some really good offensive moves today and great touchdown inside. I think as much as anything, it's the, 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 the patience. That's what he's got to be able to show. I think people know that he's had some skills. Offensively, he's still got a little ways to go, but he's showing real patience down there, throwing it back out if he doesn't get it. Here's Darrell Wilson. Not a good shot. 37-25. Darrell Wilson, a guy confident in his shooting ability. There are not many shots he doesn't like. Ellis. That Dave Luella said he's got to look at that the other one. There's Sidney Johnson. That's a backdoor cut. Four game there. Sydney. We'll keep our eyes and ears on that game for you here in the New York studios. Ten points. Mississippi State leads Princeton 37-27. Tomorrow at noon, we'll be here for more second round action. Then at 12-15, New Mexico and Georgetown. 12-25, Temple and Cincinnati in our second round of game. Look at this. Iowa and Arizona, North Carolina, Texas Tech, Louisville and Villanova, and Boston College and Georgia Tech. And then the late games will feature Santa Clara and Kansas and Texas against the number two seed there, Wake Forest. Thank you for joining Penn's All at the Half for Clark Kellogg and all of us here at CBS. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. Penn's Oil at the Half was sponsored by Penn's Oil. For more engine miles, Penn's Oil works like liquid ball bearings. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Introducing the Michelin X1 with a six-year unlimited mileage tread life warranty. It gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus control in any driving condition. After all, it hasn't rained that much in years. This is CBS. Go to the hole with flair. Quick and strong. Play that tough D. Smile. Do no wrong. Sign autographs. Many autographs. Be an inspiration. Work hard. Have fun. Enjoy the infatuation. But remember, listen to moms. Take her advice. When you go out to play, always dress nice. The new Plymouth Voyager was named Automobile Magazine's All-Star Minivan for 1996. Car and Driver ranked it in their 10 Best Automobiles of 1996. And not only does it surpass other minivans on the road, but with a 3-liter, 150-horsepower V6 engine, 
It has 36 times the cargo space of a Porsche 911 for about a third of the price. Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile, Bud Light, Gateway 2000, and by the United States Postal Service. The Drexel Dragons hit two out of 14 shots in the last 14 minutes of the first half, yet are tied at 24 with fourth seed at Syracuse, along with Derek Dickey, Tim Brando. And, you know, you watch this game play, and it's almost as if Syracuse's style of play allows Drexel an opportunity to hang in. Almost more conducive to Memphis Tigers, but Drexel's done a good job defensively, and by doing so, controlling their defensive boards and getting to the free throw line, that's been the key for the Dragons in the first half. And, you know, seniors don't want to play their final game particularly one that's wearing the glass slipper, and that's certainly the case for Malik Rose. Special, that's all I can say is special. It's a blessing for me to be a part of this type of season on my senior year and to be the leader of this bunch on the court. You know, I can't ask for anything more. For us to come here to the tournament, you know, one of the final 64 teams, and we weren't really supposed to win a game, and for us to upset a team like Memphis, who's, you know, a very good team, and for us to have a chance to go to the Sweet 16, it's just a great going away present. Malik Rose not having the best of games, but again, injured that ankle against Memphis. But the, the leader of this team, inspirational, if not effective, on the offensive end. And living at the line, Syracuse, only two free throws. And because Drexel's been able to get there, they're tied. Well, 14 more attempts, as well as 8 to nothing on the fast break point. The Dragons are doing a good job of scoring in, the, in transition, but they have to find a way to continue to defend Otis Hill inside. Otis Hill has three fouls. Also, Lazar Sims with three fouls. I think the Dragons need to attack. And you figure Otis Hill to get the ball a bit more often in the second half for Syracuse. And uh, when he gets it, if he draws a foul, it will be a difficult one for Bayham to deal with. As you see, Jay Myers, Jeff, but just call me Jay, puts in the deuce. And it's a two-point lead. He has eight in the game. Two for five from the floor, and Hill, as we mentioned, five out of seven from the floor, and really needs more touches in the second half. Cornelius Overby is dropping completely off of Lazar Sims. That's the kind of defensive style that Bill Harrion preaches. He did that to Memphis, allowing Garner to take shots, and uh, Garner couldn't hit them. He realizes you got to sacrifice somewhere. He doesn't want Syracuse to beat him inside. He's going to let the perimeter guys make the decisions about the shot selection. Myers missed that one. Lazar Sims running the show. He has Wallace, Cipolla, Hill. He's been getting it there all night. And he's been doing that all night. All day, all night, all morning, all afternoon. Feed him until he can't eat anymore. 28 to 26. Two-point cushion for the Orangemen. Just underway, second half. 12th seeded Drexel against number four seed Syracuse. Overby, a pull -up. Malik Rose, a rare offensive board, and he uses the window pane. That's only the first offensive basket for Malik Rose. He took two attempts in the first half, did not score from the field. Guitar trying to check, and Wallace getting away from Overby. The finger roll, a specialty move of John Wallace. But you saw him just absolutely move clear out Malik Rose with his left arm. No call was made. A healthy Malik Rose would have stayed in there and challenged that shot. John Wallace, as we mentioned the other day, staying for that senior year, it's proven to pay a lot of dividends for him. 
Hill with the overplay, knocking it away. Drexel will trigger it in. Malik Rose had seven rebounds in that first half, all on the defensive boards. Here he comes up with an offensive stick back. He does have enough stamina. And he, I think he did something in the locker room to keep that ankle loose so that he was able to come out and be a factor right away. Good luck, Katar. Pass inside to Overby. That was a mom's best Sunday dish. Oh, it was a great pass and nice explosion to the basket by Overby. Sapola gets it out to Hill. Bergen out high for the three. Guitar the rebound. Quick outlet. Overby. Zara Sims not even a factor on that play. Talk about your athletic prowess in the Big East all you want, but the North Atlantic Conference can say, hey, you know, Boston University's not a bad team. They pushed them, <laughs> they beat them once, and beat them in Philadelphia. Well, of the three games that Drexel lost this season, in the second half, they were ahead at some point in those games. These guys are doing something right. Great defensive effort. Overby again. Garakis goes with a skip pass to Myers. Overby. Off the back iron. Cleared by Wallace. Sims looks to Hill. Double team. Knocked out of bounds by Jay Myers. How about a bounce pass from up high? Oh, it's just excellent transits. You want to be able to get the ball to the free throw line whenever possible. Excellent bounce, backdoor bounce pass to get it inside. Cornelius Overby knows what to do with it. The Orangemen have to find a way to defend that a little bit better. Reese Snyder coming into the game. John Wallace has 10. Got off to a slow start, only hitting on two of his first seven shots, but has improved the latter stages of the first half and now into the second. You mentioned as we were going to halftime how much this crowd has rallied around the Drexel Dragons. It almost sounded like when uh, when the Dragons came out, they, they were playing at home and the circuit was on the road. Myers hits the train. 35-32. Myers had 15 points against Memphis. You can hear that crowd right now. After every miss, a chance for Drexel to get a two-possession lead this time. Good time. An air ball. And they were even groaning when they missed. <laughs> Sims leaves it for Reese Snyder. On the deck, Sapolo, we've got a tie ball with the arrow to Syracuse. <laughs> Just underway second half, we may be going wire to wire again. During development, the Aurora's V8 engine raced the equivalent distance of 31 Indy 500s back to back. It also broke 47 speed endurance records, two of which had been set by Mercedes. And along the way, it hit a top speed of 3,500 miles per hour. My mistake, that was the Air Force's Aurora. Our version has never been clocked above Mach 3. It's your money. Computers in Silicon Valley have a model number on them and that's it. At Gateway 2000, our custom-built computers are treated a little differently. That's because every system we build has a name attached. Connie Kramer, Connie from New Jersey, this is your computer and it's on television. Gateway computers feature the Intel Pentium processor. And the only way to get them is to call 1-800-GATEWAY. You get a friend in the business, give us a call. 
FedEx has over 33,000 drop-off spots to take your two-day package. Cost, about $12. UPS has over 75,000 drop-off spots for your two-day package. Cost, about $6. The U.S. Postal Service has over 330,000 drop-off spots for your priority mail two- to three-day package. Cost, exactly $3. So, 12, 6, 3, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Because of its remarkable clarity, Cellular One is the nation's number one cellular service, clear across America. in cyberspace on the road to the final four take the challenge go behind the scenes jump online with cbs drexel has a three-point lead the number 12 seed against syracuse along with Derek dickey tim brando and right now with malik rose as an inspirational leader it's the backcourt and cornelius overby that could be the key player in this game cornelius overby and jeff myers have been major factors they have to continue to utilize their quickness look at this crossover by overby they need more of that in transition to be able to score inside oh. reese snyder sapola bergen john wallace and lazar sims on the floor reese snyder fouled on that putback. He and Malik Rose now exchanging forearms. Not to be intimidated. Not this team. John Wallace has started to play more on the perimeter. He's not even utilizing his ability to be able to post up and go down low. I know that's Otis Hill's office, but Otis is not on the floor right now. Wallace needs to utilize the inside game a little bit more than relying on his perimeter jump shot. He's not shot the ball well outside. That was the second foul against Guitar. Wallace is only 5 of 14, Derek, so you're accurate. Reef mm. Snyder up high. Don't get JB made. <laughs> He'll come back at you. 35 to 34. At 6'11, he has pretty good range from the perimeter, but Jason Sapolo, a very good outside shooter for the Orange, he had 12 points against Montana State. He has not scored a basket in this game. Myers gets it inside the guitar. Good ball movement by Drexel. Garakas not hitting from beyond the arc tonight. Garakas, who was such a key element in that win over Memphis. Sapola constantly running that curl, gives it up to Bergen. Wallace steps outside for three. Look out. That's the aspect of his game that he's really improved in. And one of the reasons why, when you stay for a senior year, you might be worth more. As you look at the back backcourt score in Drexel, out-dueling Syracuse with an injured Lazara Sims. Well, if I'm Bill Harry and I'm going to let a 6'8", 6'9", guy take jump shots out on the perimeter, he had not shot the ball well prior to that attempt. Jay Myers deflected by Wallace. Malik Rose saves it. Followed by Reed Snyder. JB is not happy. He felt like he got all ball on that play. But I like the awareness of Malik Rose. He's not been a major factor offensively, but he's gone after the ball. He's come up with some tips. He's come up with some offense and defensive rebounds. And he's kept the Dragons in this game. Mario Shinulis coming into the game. Sapola sitting down next to Bernie Fine, one of Jim Beheim's able assistants. One of the most stable stabs in Division I college basketball, the Syracuse Orangemen. Bernie Fine and Wayne Morgan. Well, the Orangemen, as the clock are winding down, trying to get something going, and John Wallace knows exactly where he is on the floor in front of his bench. He steps out to take that shot. They have to continue to find a way to score. Loose ball to Myers. Garakas saves the over and back. Now the pressure from Sims. Loose ball to Zaris to steal. And the foul. The foul out front. Yeah. No basket. Guitar in frustration. 
for Ib Lazaris, a lot of credit. The feet may not be as quick or as nimble, but the hands just as good. Oh, he's got excellent hands out there, especially away from the basket. He strips it out of the hand of Chuck Guitar, and he's going in for the hoop, but you still, defensively, if he's in front of you, you have to be able to protect that ball. David Fry coming into the game to replace Chuck Guitar. Wallace left free. Tipped in by Bergen. And very quietly has asserted himself. Syracuse may be in the Big East. But Bergen's not gotten his Eastern due of publicity. No, he hasn't. He's been the unsung hero of this Orange team all season long. But how about those quiet 17 points and 10 rebounds against Montana State? Myers setting up around the arc. Overby for three. The shot suddenly not falling for the backcourt as Rose. Got to be in ball somewhere. It's a travel. Wow. Jimmy Beheim can't believe it. Todd Bergen does a terrific job on the offensive glass. John Wallace misses from the outside again, but coming from the behind to be able to tip that ball back up, Todd Bergen does a terrific job. Derek Drexel is really struggling now on the offensive end. That's an offensive foul. And the Dragons, of course, believe that's the quote-unquote makeup call going the other way. But Syracuse has seven unanswered points. Mm. But you'd think if Bill Harrion's team is going to be knocked out, it's going to come now. If they're allowed to hang in by Syracuse, the depth of the Drexel bench could be a major factor. I think it could be. Wallace on the floor. Ball is on the floor, so the basket won't count. Syracuse is being a little bit more aggressive. It seems like they have the energy here late in the game, and the Dragons do not have that extra support that they can reach down and pull out a little bit more. It all comes down to making shots from the perimeter. And right now, Bill Harrion's guards are getting it done. Reese Snyder. Nice pass. Sims with the dish. JB with the hoop. A 9-0 run for the Orangemen. Time for the timeout for the Dragons. Bill Harry and Sitzing with Syracuse coming out with some purpose here in the second half. It's a 20-second timeout. The Orangemen seem to be playing with a little bit more energy right now, feeling they're starting to smell a little bit of blood. As you look at the West Regional, Georgia knocking off the top seed, Purdue. That's the first number one seed in this year's tournament to go down. Drexel and Syracuse will play Georgia in Denver in the round of 16, the winner of this game. And if by chance Mississippi State holds on against Princeton tonight, Georgia advancing to the Sweet 16, that would mean four SEC teams would be into the round of 16 for the first time since 1986. Wow. That's pretty impressive, and everybody's saying that the SEC was down. I don't think so. They're making a statement. Kentucky could make a lot of leagues look down <laughs> this year. Syracuse has gone to that 2-3 zone, still trying to force the Dragons to shoot from the perimeter. Garakas answers. They needed that one. Mike Garakas needed that basket for his own confidence. The Dragons, a collective 4 of 17 from downtown. Darakis with his first tray. He has seven on the game. Sims the dump down to Bergen. Foul against Myers. Malik Rose showing that he can still get up and change a shot or two. Myers lobbying with John Clockerty. Well, this is a much better job of moving the ball to the open spot. And Mike Darakis, even though he struggled from the perimeter so far in this game, he still has to continue to look for that shot. By making that one, it can build his, as well as the Dragons' confidence back up. Bergen shoots 66% from the strike. But the Orangemen only getting there for the fourth time after this free throw. They are one of four. They have a chance to get down before Wallace gets set. That's a kick, a fresh 35 for Drexel. Isn't it amazing? A quick 20, and Bill Harrion gets command again.
great taste that will fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. 23 seconds left. The winner moves on. The loser goes. And here they come. They bring the ball to the top of the key. Here's a swing pass, but it's stolen. Footlocker's got the Nike Air School Force. And we've got a tie ball game with 12 seconds left to go. The shoe worn by the top teams in March. Second bounce pass. The half court. The touch pass is gone. Dribble penetration down the lane. And all those willing to take someone to school. Footlocker, where it all begins. In shopping for a luxury performance sedan, Jay Kerness tested the Oldsmobile LSS against the fastest, most nimble machine on earth. Juma, the Cheetah. The LSS's sport suspension and traction control attacked the course, as did the Cheetah. But while he considered the LSS's precise handling quite impressive, there was one thing he failed to consider. Cheetahs are very sore losers. Will the LSS pass your test? Nice, Kitty. Go away. Jesse. Jesse, you're next. I'm all yours. Save it for the stage, Romeo. Carol always gives it to me straight. Like when she told me about my... I told him about head and shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away so they could come back. Head and shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. You see the difference? You look great. Thanks, but will it get me this part? Couldn't hurt. Head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. Hey, break a leg. An innocent man accused of murder faces a town without pity. Would you shoot an unarmed man, would you? No, I wouldn't. I'd sure beat the hell out of you. Milger tonight. Who's next? Three-point lead for Syracuse after the timeout. And the Drexel fans are getting some help from the locals here in the mountain time zone that are really behind the 12th seed. He touched the ball. Good no call. Drexel trailing by three, nine minutes deep here in the second half. West Regional second round. So much history in this building. The pin in Albuquerque. Fry can't get it to go down. Drexel. Doing everything they can to hang with the number four seed out of the Big East. Continuing to hustle after loose balls. The Dragons are not giving up. Every time it seems that the Orangemen score a basket or two to pull away, Bill Harrion will utilize a timeout and make a difference to get back in this game. Bergen. He'll give up those threes from time to time. As that uh, Dre Drexel defense sloughs off in the middle. They try to keep Wallace and Reese Snyder and Hill from being so dominant as they were at times in the opening half. What a huge basket by Todd Burton. Three-point field goals being kind to Syracuse in the opening round. Wallace the rebound. The quick outlet to Lazarus Sims. He touched on... Malik Rose so often being injured. Sims playing on a leg and a half for that injured knee. Loose ball. And it will belong to Syracuse underneath. Great hustle. Great hustle by Cornelius Overby. He doesn't give up on this loose ball at all. He tips it out of the hands of Lazar Sims. And he tries to stay with it. Stay with it. He still can't quite get it. But he wants this ball. He wants to keep possession of this ball for the Dragons. Wallace trying to get free on the baseline. Sims gets it to him. Working against Guitar. Rejected by Guitar. Overby, who has been reluctant to shoot in the last few minutes. Myers isn't. Off the back iron, Malik Rose. A putback, and a foul. is what's going to get the Dragons back in this game. Chuck Guitar, a couple of inches smaller than John Wallace, blocks this ball and keeps it in bounds. And the Dragons, they are going to be aggressive, as we mentioned, going after loose balls. This is nice hustle by a guy with a bad ankle. Malik Rose absorbs the contact and takes it home. Just seven points, but 12 rebounds for Malik Rose. Bill Harrion pulling all of the strings, trying to keep his team in it. As the game progresses, 
Kelsey gets more confident. Wallace the rejection. Rose back at you. Great, great hustle. Hill is on the deck. He's hurt. We mentioned it earlier, Derek. This is a Syracuse team that is not as deep as Drexel. And it sounds very strange to say, frankly, because you're talking about a team that most of the country knows very little about versus a team steep in tradition. That everybody knows about. Syracuse will only go two deep in their, into their bench, whereas Drexel will go as many as nine and ten deep and get production out of the guys off the bench, and they have this evening. And if there are 5,000 feet in elevation, it could count late in the game. Otis Hill asserting himself in a big way. 14 points in the game. So after the headache, he gives one to Bill Herrian on the other end. If I'm the orange man, I'm still going to give the ball to Otis Hill anytime he was within 15 feet of the basket. Bad pass by Rose, picked off by Cipolla. Nice. Beautiful move by Jason Cipolla. Going reversal to give the Orangemen a six-point lead. Jason Cipolla showing that experience does pay off. He's a junior college transfer out of Tallahassee Community College. That's the first fast break point of the night for Syracuse. Guitar, not there. Cleared by Wallace. The Orangemen want this to be a half-court game. Side shot will be there for Sims. They've been sloughing off him. He's been reluctant to take the shot. Not even a factor in terms of looking at the basket. Rosaris has to look to score. Wallace. Strong move by John Wallace. Big shoulder by Wallace to be able to use that left to clear out. Only six points in the first half for Wallace. Already nine in the second half. 15 for the game. And this is the largest lead for Syracuse. 50 to 42. Overbeat. The dunk down to Rose. Tough chance, but he comes away with it. Nine shot on clock. the shot clock. Guitar. Rose again. Hits the deck. Tie ball. The arrow to Drexel. And listen to this crowd. All of them didn't come from Philadelphia. Look at the respect by Rose and Hill. Plenty of it as we're coming down to cases. Sapola and company getting it done on the first fast break points. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. Yes! Hey, look, it's the new Pontiac Sunfire. Now, if you take yours dog sledding in the Yukon, all that interior room means for once, your sled dogs won't argue about who gets in front. Or if you take your new Pontiac Sunfire zipping over to that Pisa place, the sports suspension and high revving engine mean you'll really enjoy driving it at the full tilt. Pontiac Sunfire, driving excitement for around 13-2. Hey, where's the kids? It's just you and me tonight. And chicken marsala. Your favorite. Oh, but it gave me heartburn last time. Not tonight. But it's too late for Pepsid AC. The packet says you've got to take it an hour before eating to prevent heartburn. I know. Why should I have to wait an hour to eat? Forget that hour stuff. I got you Tang of it HB. It says it prevents heartburn at half the time. So I can take it now and not get heartburn? Yeah. I can't wait. Tang of it HB. Advanced prevention of heartburn in half the time. <laughs> of its remarkable clarity, Cellular One is the nation's number one cellular service, clear across America. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick 
Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Syracuse Arsman trying to not become a, another dubious West Regional statistic. And Malik Rose, his stats. Samson Life, how about that? 1,513 career rebounds. That's why they call him the Shack of the Knack. The stats are Shack like. <laughs> He's only the second Drexel Dragon to have his jersey retired. Mike Anderson did. And he's already retired. Every timeout by Bill Harrion leads to a basket. 50 to 44. That was a critical possession for them to convert. And would have taken it to a double-digit lead had the Orange been held and been able to go down and score. Orangeman have been looking for the knockout punch since very early in the second half. Drexel failing to hit from the perimeter, a real problem. Bergen gets free on the block. Shot clock at seven. Long rebound to Overby and a reach-in foul on Sims. That's his fourth. That's his fourth. As he glances over at us. I want to interrupt this game to let you look in on a little piece of history. This will be Pete Curl's final college game after 29 seasons at Princeton. 13 Ivy League titles. He's going down today against Mississippi State. Just too strong for the Tigers of Princeton. They lead 61 to 41 now and three ticks on the clock. And the story, Mississippi State wins and goes to the round of 16 for the second year in a row. But the big story is so long to Coach Carrill, who at 65 years old, decided to call it quits, Clark. They had a fabulous run. He'll be missed. All that wisdom and knowledge. Only one, guy. only one losing season ever at Princeton. 514 wins and 11 tournament appearances. What a career. One second left in this game, by the way. It's a 20 point game, about two tenths actually. And what must he be thinking? It's All the members. of a run. Pleasure to coach against your team. They're a very well coached basketball team and I'm proud to say I got a chance to compete against you. And we're proud to have been associated with Pete Carell. Congratulations on a great career coach and so long. Back to Albuquerque. St. Judas Syracuse now nursing a four-point lead and within 26 seconds of one another Lazar Sims and Otis Hill each picked up a fourth foul hence the look on the face of Jimmy Beheim as the Drexel Dragons once down by eight have now scored four unanswered since the timeout by Bill Harrion and the 12th seed trying to continue this theme of Albuquerque the home of the greatest Cinderella story in 83, becoming the Cinderella first round in 96 of this NCAA tournament. The Drexel Dragons are not going away. They're playing tenacious defense. John Wallace just got a finger in the eye. and counting. Sims still on the floor with four fouls. Hill on the floor with four fouls. A three by Sims. That's why Jimmy Beheim keeps him into the game. He is a floor leader. He makes good decisions and for him to take that shot after not looking at the basket for the last 15 minutes, excellent decision by Lazar Sims. But every time Drexel's needed a basket, they've gotten one. Overby. Riley on the deck, loose ball to Bergen. Boy, Sims had snuck out, was wide open, but they didn't see him. Drexel is four for 23 from behind the arc, in sharp contrast to Thursday's win against fifth seeded Memphis. 50% against Memphis, they made nine out of 18, which allowed the big guy, Malik Rose, to be able to score inside. This has been a crowd firmly behind the underdog. We have a whistle.
John Wallace has to look to score, but he also has to be able to recognize a double team. And in kicking this ball out to Lazar Sims, a good decision, yes, to get it out, but also a better decision for Sims to take the shot. We had an inadvertent whistle to stop play. The shot clock remains at 12. So Sims will have to put it up. And put it in. First double-digit lead of the game. And another timeout by the Dragons. 4.40 remaining. Drexel down by 10. Lewis Scott, he's got the game, he's got the money, he's got the women, he's got two big problems. You are in Bean Town now, baby! Bean Town! Hey, if you can't beat him, hold it right there, ball hog, steal him. Damon Wayans, Daniel Stern, and Dan Aykroyd. Might have to go to jail and become some bad man's boyfriend. Celtic Pride, rated PG-13, starts Friday, April 19th. Man, I could sure use some Tylenol for this headache. Hey, I got this. Ibuprofen? <laughs> no, Bill, I can't. I got an ulcer, and I could aggravate it. No kidding, my mom's got an ulcer. The doctor said to be careful. Tylenol's a better choice for me, and it works great. If you use ibuprofen and have an ulcer, Tylenol may be a better choice for you. Talk to your doctor. Mom, it's Billy. How you doing? Listen, about your ulcer. If you ever end up in some Ben-Hur movie in your all-new Pontiac Sunfire GT with its powerful twin-cam engine, you'll be glad you have a quick-handling sport suspension. And, of course, 150 horses. Introducing the all-new Pontiac Sunfire GT. Finally, a real set of wheels you can really afford. You've followed a thousand players here. A thousand more will follow you. Maybe someone will listen. Maybe someone will hear. And we've been working too. Brew the new beer from the heart of the hops. It's a beer with heart that goes down easy. New Miller beer. Listen to what's inside of you. Then you can reach for what's out there. This week on The Late Show, Hugh Grant, Andre Agassi, Barbara Walters, Ray Charles, Ricky Lake, Halle Berry, and William Shatner. This week on CBS. In a game that's featured nine ties, seven lead changes, Malik Rose playing on a poor ankle, still with 14 rebounds. Drexel trails by 10, and Lazarus Sims, only nine points in the game. The Big East leader in assists, making the two biggest threes of this game for Syracuse. And out of the timeout, Malik Rose, every time Bill Harrion gets a timeout, they get production on the offensive end. That's exactly what you want after a timeout, but you have to give Lazarus Sims an awful lot of credit playing with a bad leg. And playing with four fouls, as is Otis Hill, and Otis now has 16. The Orange men have been finding a way to get it done. And I think it all stems from Lazar Sims making those three-pointers, giving the confidence back to the Orange men. Darakis stepping inside the arc gets the deuce, and that may be a positive sign for a future three. Just to be able to make a basket. Drexel needs baskets right now. They also need defense to try to hold Syracuse. Don't let them get second and third looks. Now you don't think of Lazarus Sims in the same vein as perhaps a Sherman Douglas or a Pearl Washington. But uh, the history books will be awfully kind to him when his playing days are done at the Carrier Dome and at Syracuse. He averaged seven assists a game in Big East play and also 50% behind the three-point arc. Wallace in Syracuse the 10-point cushion yet again. It's the largest lead that they've had tonight. Georgia already in, having knocked off top-seeded Purdue. They'll move on to Denver. Guitar up top. Myers trying to keep it alive and reels it in for Drexel. That's an NBA three. 
The iron unkind to the Drexel offensive perimeter tonight. And Hill bringing down yet another rebound. Jeff Myers did not have to force that shot, but John Wallace is showing an awful lot of patience. Last time down, he gave the ball back out to Lazarus Sims, who hit the outside shot. This time, the defense is not sure. Is he going to go back out? Is he going to stay in? He keeps it in and turns and takes that easy jumper. Qatar taking a seat. And some offensive for defensive substitutions now being made by Bill Harry in the North Atlantic Conference Coach of the Year for a third season in five years spent in Philadelphia. The Orange men are getting the flow of this game where they want it. They want half court. They don't want the transition style that Drexel wants. Wallace nearly lost it. Niesler in the game defending Lazarus Sims. He's got a foul or so to give. They may have to resort to that in a moment. Wallace rejected by Niesler. Outlet pass to Myers. Sims is the only Orangeman back. They'll have to pull it back out now. Nice pass. Riley. Garakis with a quality look to find Brian Riley. 2-12 left. The Dragons just won't give up. you can trade them for a car. Nighttime falls on another business day. And tonight, some business people will rest a little easier. Because helping to protect their products, their property, their people, is an independent insurance agent who compared the options and recommended Kemper, the company that's been coming through for more than 75 years. Kemper Insurance, because the bottom line is your peace of mind. Final call. We've got to move fast, Kirby. I hope you booked Hertz. Uh, not exactly, but this company's fast. Fast as Hertz number one club goal? Not exactly, but they do have a special place to pick up the car. Like Hertz? Not exactly, but it'll be waiting. Under a canopy? With the keys in it? Not exactly. And protected from the weather? Not exactly. In Rent-A-Car, there's Hertz, and there's not exactly. Make sure you choose the right one. Counting on that promotion, Kirby? No, not, not exactly. No. Let's check in on Nash Bridges. Just beating the buzzer, Nash with the slam dunk and the foul. Catch Don Johnson as Nash Bridges, March 29th on CBS. 60 to 52, and with only one timeout remaining for the Dragons, one would think they'll have to put the Orangemen at the line. I think so. At least try to stop the clock. But when the Orange have need a big basket, they've gone with the experience of Sims. Also gone with Wallace and Otis Hill have done a terrific job. Pressure and a leak out to Sapola. They made it look easy that time. A 10-point cushion. And now Drexel needs a hoop in a hurry. Preferably a three. They need good looks at the basket and stop the clock if they can. Loose ball to Sapola. The knockout punt may be in the midst of being thrown as the quick foul is given by Drexel. Myers picking it up. What a terrific effort by the Drexel Dragons. Not only this tonight, but this season. Outstanding season. 27 wins. Only three losses coming in. You see our reset. The possession arrow to Drexel and only one remaining timeout. Jason Sapola at the line. A fine complimentary player. This is a Syracuse team that knows how to get it done in the half court. And uh, as for Drexel, they ran out of bombs from beyond the arc. 
Were they hitting from three, particularly their guards, they would be right in this thing. Well, that's how they were able to compete with Memphis Tigers, by hitting from the outside, but tonight they just did not have it. Loose ball again, tied up with the arrow to Syracuse. Jimmy Beheim. You talk about all of the success that he has had, and yet he, he gets more grief than just about any Division I coach I can think of for not having won the brass ring. And he's done it in the last few years with talent not similar to the talent he had in the late 80s. That's right. This may not be his most talented team that he's had, but so far, these guys are playing like they want to continue. And, it's, and he certainly lacks depth this year. Far and away, perhaps, uh, the smallest bench that he's had in quite a while. A lot of people have accused Jimmy of recruiting a lot of foreign players, but he told us yesterday that he's never gone overseas to watch a player play. The players that he has on his team that are from overseas, he's recruited right here in the United States. Overby. Hands a tray and a quick timeout. That's the final one for Drexel. A trail by nine. They're out there. And they're not like most of us. There's a passion that unites them like a family. Some people have even called them rebels. They're Saturn owners. Hey guys, this must be the place, huh? Ladies, hurry up! The factory guy's gonna talk! I don't know. I guess if you don't own one, you probably wouldn't understand. ทางเดชครับเนี่ยแหละต้องรู้ปรับระบบทั้งฐานคนช่วยเดี๋ยวนั้นแต่ก็ไม่ดีขึ้นใช่ว่ะอืมอย่างนี้ต้องไอบีเ
and his coach Bill Harrion said he never made a home visit to Malik Zone. Malik and his parents actually came to the campus. He only saw him play a half of one high school game, and his assistant coach Steve Seymour said, "You got to take him," and they did, and they're very happy that they did. Sims just as courageous for Syracuse with 11 and 7, and a quick trade from Myers. Still an eight-point game with over a minute to play, and the quick foul against Wallace. We've seen stranger things happen, to him. Three possession game. Wallace is on the free throw line. Chuck Qatar is fouled out. That's his fifth, and he had to give himself up. The clock is as much the enemy as is John Wallace at this stage. Guitar, a junior, out of uh, neighboring New Jersey, transferred from Division II New Haven. A dream come true for him. He had a terrific season. Average almost, almost 10 points and five rebounds a game. Well, he was a quality acquisition to allow Malik Rose more room to bring the defense out from the perimeter, sort of a face-up center. At six foot nine, that's a, that's a tremendous asset. Just was not on tonight. Over me, a three. Bergen, the outlet to send. Drexel playing hard throughout. No foul. As Myers got all leather. Bill Harrion did all he could. Someone's got to get it through the cylinder. He just didn't have enough of that in the second half. George Hudgens picks up the foul. He will emerge as one of the true first-round star coaches along the sideline. In uh, the great tradition of the NCAA tournament, this is where first-round strategists are born. We mentioned the other day that he does not get as, as much respect as some people think he should playing in the shadow of the Big Five in Philadelphia with Penn, LaSalle, Duquesne, Temple, and Villanova. But Drexel is a program that needs to be reckoned with. Sims gets one of the two. And the lead is 10. Precious seconds getting away from the Dragons. Myers needs help. Malik Rose, that's a three. Sapola the rebound. Now the Orangemen decided to play keep away as Sapola is fouled. When you think of the magnificent record they had, 26 and 3 coming into this NCAA tournament and then beating Memphis. And they were in every game they lost, including this one. Including this one. And they came in with a tremendous winning streak, second longest in the nation, having won their last 15 straight games. Now the white flag perhaps being given by Coach Harry in his Overby and Myers checkout. There are the three losses. Murray State. Mm. That's impressive. Mark Godfrey, the former UCLA assistant, coaches that team. They were a narrow loss away from making this NCAA tournament field themselves. And now Malik Rose will check out. And he deserves, deserves a hand. all of the applause that he'll get. 11 points, 15 rebounds. This is a young man that lost a brother. Tragically, had to become a, a father, if you will, for the remainder of his family, and has become the centerpiece of this Drexel program. And uh, everything that's right about intercollegiate athletics is embodied in Malik Rose. A fifth grade student teacher. Length of the floor pass to Sims. And it will be the Orangemen moving into the Sweet 16, joining the Georgia Bulldogs. A fourth seed and an eighth seed will come out of the pit in Albuquerque. Jimmy Bayheim given a stern test from Bill Harrion. And the glass slipper comes off the Dragons from Philadelphia.
another win for the Big East Conference in this NCAA tournament. And our final score, 69 Syracuse, 58 Fort Drexel. Our genuine Chevrolet players of the game are Malik Rose from Drexel and Otis Hill from Syracuse. And in celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. And the brackets from the Mountain Time Zone in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Georgia emerges having beaten the top seed Purdue out of the Big Ten and Syracuse coming out with a win over Drexel. For Derek Dickey, this is Tim Brando saying so long from Albuquerque. And when we return, you'll get a final tune-in from our folks in New York, Pat O'Brien and company. In shopping for a luxury...